Hi right, guys, Rye back here, back for another how to. Today's episode is going to be a how to with optics. So we're going to be going through a few, which is going to be iron sights, red dots, red dots and magnifiers, and power optics. Four very broad terms. I'm going to try and condense all this information down and kind of where to, how to, and why to use all of these different optics. So we're going to go with number one, which is iron sights. It's um, majority, actually nearly all guns come stock with iron sights. It's a free, cheap optic system that you can use. You can buy your own iron sights. Um, you know, depending on if you don't like the setup you have, if you want offsets and stuff like that. We're going to delve too much into offsets and um, briefly go over them in this segment. But as a placeholder, and because I know half of you guys are attention deficit like I am. We're going to go with iron sights. This is my KGW KCO2. The iron sights currently I have on it are actually Scorpion Evo iron sights. Um, kind of fits in with the whole motif of kind of this is a varmint gun, so to speak. Um, front fiber, optic front sight, and a peephole rear sight. You know, iron sights are easy. You just have to align the rear peephole with the front fiber optic or the front blade and that helps you to get your shots on the target. Iron sights are slower than a red dot sight because you have to align the two of them instead of just putting the rifle up and being able to look down, you know, look at the dot. So these are iron sights. Um, on say 90% of my builds I will have iron sights as a redundancy. On them, or if I have a red dot, I will use my front iron sight to co witness and to have a reference point. So if there is parallax on my red dot, I know that right, this is the dot is meant to be sitting at either the top, the middle, or the bottom of the iron sight. So that is an important thing to note that iron sights do co witness with red dots. So with my KCO2. I plan to use this, you know, simply as a environment gun if I ever play civilians at a mill sim, but it is slow. I do have the orange front fire optic which helps me, you know, see a bit easier, but it is like the time to get the sight on target, there we go, is slow, but you know, it's airsoft as long as you kind of have it somewhat on target you'll eventually hit it when you put enough rounds down range. So that is that is iron sights. Very simple, rudimentary, but they don't need batteries and they don't break. So that is their one big advantage. They don't break and they don't run out of batteries. You can buy offset mounts, but they only work maybe 10 meters and in, and you'll have to count the rifle to the side at 45 degrees. So that is iron sights. Red dot sights. And we're going to put magnifiers in on this segment as well because they're meant to be together. So this is a my TM MTR. I just put a Mark 18 rail and a normal stock back onto it just to see what it would look like and whether I would like a Mark 18 with a red dot sight. Right, with the EOTech, this is an AMO one. The Optic is a dot with a donut around it. It has a lot of slop on it. Uh, I stole that term from GMR. But with that slop, as long as you have it on the, you know, the donut within centre mass at you know, 20 metres and in, you're going to hit the target as long as your dot is not too far too left, too far too right, or too far up and down. I don't have a front iron sight on this setup. Um, but I kept the rear on it. Um, but with this, this is a this is my CQB build. This will be going back to being a honey badger, and I will be doing an overview on the honey badger build once I'm done with this. So with the red dot, it takes batteries. This takes one one two three A. Um, I do have an SRO as well, which is a very big optic that takes double A's. But the advantage of a red dot is quicker than iron sights, you know, a lot quicker, and um, you can choose it between green and red, you know, depending on what colour you like, 
you can match it with your magnifier which has its spot you know on builds and also it has that you know cool factor that milsim factor military rifle looking you know, which is this is a kind of semi kosher build although all these pieces will be on back onto my ptw so with the red dot you just have to bring it up and put it onto target that's as simple as it is red dots are fairly simple with the magnifier you know it can help you identify a target at a longer distance but they are a lot slower because you have to get it to where the eye relief is perfect to see through it with this g33 replica you can actually zero the magnifier with the dot so you're not when you look through a magnifier sometimes because they flip to the side they're not zeroed a hundred percent again so the dot could be at the bottom left top right wherever which does affect accuracy a bit um, another thing that I like to use the magnifiers for is I don't really you know because when you're looking through an optic you can actually dim the glass a bit on the magnifier but sometimes what I like to do if I'm at an event and I have to kind of get eyes onto something I can just right tilt the rifle slightly to the side you have a crystal clear view you don't have to you know you're looking through a dot you're not looking through iron sights you don't have a crosshair on it so you can see clearly and concisely so these two work kind of kind of like an L LPVO low power variable optic so you have your one times and your three times but this setup is heavy and also takes batteries that is another thing that can uh, not make people want to uh, use red dots unless they use re re readily available optic or batteries such as my SRO which takes double A's. Another good optic to, red dot optic to get is a T1. They are workhorses. Very small objective lens but every person I've seen with a T1 they have not managed to break them. EOTX tend to break quite a bit uh, by getting shot that's a big thing um, with using a red dot is making sure that your glass has protection. I don't have a Lexon cover on that yet. Yet is the ideal word, but that setup is more tailored towards CQB, quick target acquisition, just bam bam bam. You know, getting rounds on target very quickly. The Otec is a very sloppy optic. You know, as long as you put that donut onto center mass, you're gonna hit the target. Generally, Airsoft is not 100% point of aim, point of impact. I don't care what you say about your 2K plus build. You're not going to get every target, every round on target 100% of the time. That's where arguments start. So, this has been red dots and magnifiers. We have power optics. This is a Victor Optics short dot, a 1 to 4 times optic, and LPVO, low power variable optic. Um, these have their place. You know, I've seen some snipers do very well at games with their because they have, let's say, three times up to ten times. So you can sit on a hill and do proper reconnaissance with this. You won't hit the target, but sometimes a good quality piece of glass is more important than shooting at somebody. With my LPVO, I have it generally on two because this is I find I need to be able to kind of see around where things are. This is the slowest of the setups, I would say, because you have to, while it does have good eye relief, you do have to, you know, make sure that you're on target and make sure that it is level because BBs will go off to the left and to the right. This is my main rifle at the minute. This is, a, you know, my recce rifle build. And I do have a riser to match up perfectly with the glass. That's a big thing with variable optics and power optics is making sure that your cheek weld is consistent so you can look through the optic. Mounts are another big thing with these kind of with these optics. A one piece mount is probably the best to get for a lot of these things. They're very hard to get, good quality ones at least. Because there's no faffing about with your front and rear scope ring, whether they are level. With the one piece, you know it bolts onto the rail and all you have to worry about is your optic flat. So that's a big thing is with your low power variable optics or your power optics is are they zeroed? 
are you comfortable enough that you are going to be slow in using it? You know, another, a way to combat that is to have a canted red dot that only works at 10 meters and in, or having a piggyback optic. So a piggyback optic, you see a lot of ACOGs, is you would have a red dot sitting on the optic. So that way, if you are firing and you don't have the time to look through the optic, you can just bring it down and know that you can shoot. Um, I do have a set of backup irons on this. Um, one interesting fact about this rifle is the front and rear sight I've painted with um, fluorescent paint, glow in the dark paint, to help with a reference point at night. So these are, you know, optics are, let's say, 60% functional, 40% for looks. Big thing with your optics is make sure that you get lens protectors for them. Um, with my LPVO, I have a mesh on the front screen. With my EOTech, I need to get Lexan. Similar thing, I need to get a kill flash for my SRO. Advantage of iron sights, they don't break. They don't run out of batteries. But they are a bit slower. And they're not as Gucci looking. So that is a big thing that you need to consider when you're setting up your rifle is... I'm going to be doing a lot of fast paced shooting, like Speedsoft guys, a lot of them will just have a lightweight, they'll have a, an RMR or a small lightweight red dot on their upset because they will be doing a lot of snap shooting. I can applaud them for that, you know, they're very fast, very good at snap shooting and getting shots on target. Are you taking more of the sniper role? So you want good quality glass that you can dial in at different ranges and you can see people at different ranges. Are you bridging the gap between the two with a Neo Techno magnifier or you know a short dot that goes from one to four? These are all questions you need to ask yourself when you're setting up your rifle. I've shown you three different rifle setups with you know three different optic setups, and now you all use them for different things. So it is having different builds built for different things is a fun part of airsoft. If you have one rifle, try out different optics. If you have the money or you know, go one whole day with only using iron sights and then go next week using a power optic and next week using a red dot and see which one you like. You know, I like all different kinds of optics. At the minute I'm just going out to play. When I was playing on Sunday I used my MWS the entire day and, you know, got it dialed in. Was getting a good amount of hits with this thing. Granted I was only carrying 150 or so rounds but I had a great time with this. I took off the um, canted red dot, but what I did was when we were doing CQB games, was I put this onto one power, and it works kind of like a red dot. So my front sight co-witnesses with the uh, crosshairs of my optic, so I have that kind of best of iron sights, best of a variable power, a variable power optic, and best of a red dot. So it is. It's all about what you like, what you like to do, what's within your budget, and how you want to play the game. A little tidbit of information I'm going to give now. If you're looking to get into sniping, I would not, and this is going to be your first rifle, I would not recommend getting a bolt action. Get an M4, or get whatever, you know, AEG you want, and get the optic, and treat it as, treat it as if it was a bolt action. So, I don't own a bolt action anymore. Um, I used to have a Ares Amoeba Striker knee capper. I upgraded that to the nines, and I used a red dot with that. Um, a old Bushnell forty millimeter um, objective lens red dot. I loved it. Um, I actually used to use it on this bad boy as well, because it was kind of a, an oddity of an optic. So I could just put that on and go at it. So it is. Your optics will dictate how you play, in a way, so to speak. But, back to the whole sniper thing. If you're going to be using a bolt action, or you want to get into bolt action, buy an M4, use it on semi-auto, and buy the optic, and kind of treat it that way. And then you can go, right, I like doing that. Then you can work on maybe, getting a D maybe building a DMR setup. And then after that, okay, I really like the DMR setup, but I want a bit more. Buy a bolt action, you know. 
as I've seen with a lot of people is when they're buying bolt actions, they're investing so much money into the kit and then they don't like it. So that's my little tidbit of information. Hopefully this has been informative. Um, you know, again, if you have a difference of opinion, put it down in the comment section below. Please like, comment, share it around, all that stuff. It's greatly appreciated. Until next time, I'm Ryback. Thank you very much.